waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the a bit earlier at about 7 a.m. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler. Devastation from Typhoon Yolanda pushes inflation to a two-year high, 4.1% in December. The health department prepares for a nationwide vaccination program following a measles outbreak in some areas. And Janet Yellen is the first woman to lead the U.S. Federal Reserve. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The government says devastation caused by Typhoon Yolanda, international name Haiyan, pushes inflation to a two-year high of 4.1% in December. Economic Planning Secretary Arsenio Balisacan says prices of major food items rose across the board, especially in storm-hit areas. Balisacan adds some food items even reached double-digit inflation in the areas hardest hit by the typhoon. Yolanda lashed Visayas in November, leaving at least 8,000 people dead and missing and more than 4 million homeless. It also destroyed key infrastructure, which led to gridlocks resulting in artificial supply crunches. He says December 2013's inflation is the highest since the 4.2% registered in December 2011. An uptick on oil prices and a 40% hike in generation charges imposed by Meralco also added to inflation pressures. Rehabilitation Secretary Ping Lakson says several big companies pledged to adopt areas affected by the super typhoon. Lakson compares the list of areas to a bridal registry from which big corporations can pick the local government units to help. Lakson says the firms adopted more than half of the 24 development areas identified after the typhoon. These comprise 171 cities and municipalities clustered by the government. Others pledged to take care of sectors like housing, health, classrooms, and livelihood. Named the Presidential Assistant for Rehabilitation and Recovery in December, Lakson has made public sector involvement a thrust of rehabilitation efforts. He says companies that adopt LGUs will do this for free as part of their corporate social responsibility. Lakson says he wants to avoid the co-mingling of government and private funds to manage the rehabilitation efforts effectively. The rehabilitation czar also says he is looking into reports of alleged corruption involving a local official getting kickbacks of 30 to 35 percent from bunkhouses intended for typhoon victims. Can the Philippines eliminate measles in three years' time? The Department of Health, or DOH, says there is enough time as it prepares for a nationwide vaccination in September. This is the long-term solution of the DOH for its target of a measles-free nation by 2017. Health Assistant Secretary Eric Tayag says we're one of the first countries to target measles elimination. He says being measles-free means that in a population of 100 million, the laboratory-confirmed cases should not exceed 100 people. Last year, the confirmed cases numbered 1,724. The Philippine population is 92.34 million based on the 2010 census, but the Commission on Population expected the number to reach 97.7 million in 2013. Tayag says the mass immunization will be conducted for the whole month of September, targeting 13 million children nationwide. Measles is a viral, highly contagious respiratory disease. Infected persons exhibit symptoms such as high fever, red eyes, runny nose, and cough. Rashes appear throughout the body after two days. Tayag urges parents in areas with a measles outbreak to have their children vaccinated. The military will double the size of its elite anti-terrorism unit to a regiment composed of six companies. The current Light Reaction Battalion, or LRB, which consists of three companies or about 300, two, 300 troops, led over 3,000 soldiers and police deployed in the Zamboanga City siege in September 2013. Army Chief Lieutenant General Noel Caballa says, we saw the effectiveness of this unit during the Zamboanga City siege. We are strengthening our anti-terrorism efforts. The soldiers are trained experts in counter-sniper tactics and can fight in total darkness using modern gadgets and equipment. In Zamboanga, 8 of the 20 soldiers killed belong to the LRB, uh, 2 officers and 7 non-commissioned officers. 
The Supreme Court on Tuesday affirms the Sandigan Bayan decision acquitting former Justice Secretary Nani Perez of robbery with intimidation in a case filed against him in the anti-graft court. The case comes from a complaint filed before the Ombudsman by former Manila Congressman Mark Jimenez, accusing Perez of extorting $2 million from him, supposedly in exchange for not being named a co-defendant in the plunder case against former President and now Manila Mayor Joseph Estrada. The High Court cites the Ombudsman's violation of Perez's constitutional right to due process and a speedy trial as grounds for dismissal. Perez was appointed Justice Secretary by former President Gloria Arroyo after Estrada's ouster. In 2002, then Bulacan Representative Wilfrido Villarama referred to an alleged bribery involving Perez. Education Secretary Armin Luistro says the department is open to the idea of shifting the academic calendar, but adds there is no compelling reason to move the calendar in basic education to September to June. In the current academic calendar, classes begin in June and end in March. Some of the country's major universities are considering shifting the start of classes to match neighboring countries in preparation for the establishment of the ASEAN Economic Community in 2015. In a statement Tuesday, Luis just says the shift is not a compelling concern for basic education. He says that there is no common school opening for basic education among ASEAN countries, unlike in tertiary education. He also says student mobility is, quote, very limited among grade school and high school students in ASEAN. Luis Tra adds that moving the academic calendar to begin September is not advantageous if the only reason is to avoid typhoons. If the shift pushes through, he says there could be a negative impact on learning during the year's hottest months, April and May. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 4, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is injured in a fall while cross-country skiing in Switzerland, forcing her to cancel meetings and cut back her schedule for three weeks. The 59-year-old Chancellor suffers a fractured pelvis from a fall while skiing in the southeastern Swiss region of Engaden over the Christmas holidays. The injury was initially thought to be just painful bruising, but doctors diagnosed a fracture in the pelvic area after her, her return to Berlin. At number 7, Janet Yellen becomes the first woman to lead the U.S. Federal Reserve. Yellen gets bipartisan support in the Senate with 56 votes. She replaces Ben Bernanke, who, stops, who steps down in January 31 after eight years in the job. Yellen, a 67-year-old academic economist, has a long-term interest in the impact of joblessness on the economy and has helped keep Fed policy focus on bringing down the unemployment rate. And at number 8... Japan's ambassador to Britain hits back at China a week after a Chinese envoy compared Japan to the Harry Potter villain Lord Voldemort. In an opinion piece published in the Daily Telegraph, Keiichi Hayashi accuses Beijing of raising tensions in the East China Sea, where both countries have staked claims over disputed islands. Hayashi says China could abide by the rule of law and seek dialogue or, quote, play the role of Voldemort by letting loose the evil of an arms race an escalation of tensions. Hayashi's comments are a response to, peace, to a piece by Chinese ambassador to the UK Lu Xiaoming, who criticized the visit of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to the controversial Yasukuni Shrine. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's Mood Navigator. A quick look at the Mood Navigator shows several red circles over here to the left. Let's look at the biggest red one right in the center. Kickbacks and high-end bunkhouses at 30%. This was yesterday's top story. This has 87% of readers feeling angry and 5% annoyed. Let's move over to the right to the only purple circle. This is a movie review, My Little Bossing's The Horrible Business of Show Business. This has 47% of readers feeling annoyed, while 11% 11 say they don't care. And right in the middle, a light green circle, the biggest story or the biggest circle in the Mood Navigator. This is a letter to Senator Jingoy Estrada. This story has 67% of readers feeling happy and 18% of people feeling inspired. 
This story largely contributes to the mood of today. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, January 7, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.